epic opening for an epic video. Cassidy Merriweather writes, What should I do while I'm in Nashville? When in Nashville, my friend, you gnash. You gnash like you've never gnashed before. Eric Grubbs asked, How'd you wind up in that Taco Cabana commercial? Yeah, they asked for extras, so I showed up. Rebecca Cooper Williams asked, If you wanted to pitch an idea to the storyline of a TV show, how would you do it? Me personally, I'd come in the back way. Because the thing is, you have to have a bit of a persona before you get in there and start pitching to people. They have to kind of know you. They have to have some reason to take your meeting. So me, I mean, off the top of my head, I might, you know, create like a video podcast where, I don't know, maybe I answer questions from people uh, just randomly and then, you know, let that develop and become popular. And then as it does, I'll use that as a launching pad for my own projects. <laughs> Cheryl Baker asks, Mixtapes for crushes or road trips, advanced and mixed CDs, now I guess MP3 playlists. Please share some of your mixtape memories and your thoughts on the old style versus new style. Cheryl, I'm with you. You know, I think there's a whole generation of kids growing up that are just never going to know the awesomeness of creating a mixtape. There really was a science to it, you know? I mean, uh, the entire movie High Fidelity is pretty much based on that concept. I remember I had this mixtape one time, I played so much that it snapped. And I actually patched it back together with scotch tape, like I actually like got a little tiny screwdriver and opened up the case and, and did that to it. Um, but then when I played it in my car, it was one of those that would flip from one side to the other, and whenever it got to that point, it would flip over. So there were like three or four songs on either side of that that I never did hear, and I would have to actually like stop the tape, take it out of the deck, manually with my, you know, the fingernails, wind it up and stick it back in so that I could hear the rest of the song. So it had its limitations. But I do really think this is interesting because, I mean, I, I love the idea of MP3 playlists and having all the music in the world that you want to listen to uh, right on hand at all times. But uh, there was something really fun and creative about the limitations of a tape, of only having a certain number of songs that you could have on each side and trying to play them out in an order that would make sense and that would tell a story. I think it's actually really interesting because, you know, as a, as a creative person, you always hear people say, you know, think outside the box. But that's the worst thing you can do when you're trying to be creative because truly limitations are what make you creative. Just like creating a mixtape when we were young was a lot more creative than just throwing thousands of songs onto a playlist now, creativity doesn't come without boundaries. Creativity comes from boundaries. In fact, creativity comes from the smallest box possible. Vincent Wren asked, why? Vincent, ours is not the question why, ours is about to do and die. Tennyson. The awesome Susie Sue asked, why are there holes in Swiss cheese? Susie, those holes in the cheese are created by tiny bacteria that in the cheese making process release carbon dioxide into these bubbles in the cheese, which when you slice it, creates holes. So you're basically eating the farts of millions of tiny microscopic bugs. Sandwich? Brian Goss asked, when shooting something based in Dallas or Texas in general, what's the minimum number of cowboy hats I need to use? And is there a maximum? <laughs> Uh, Brian, this is a good question, and Texas is a big place, so it's different depending on where you go. Say, for example, if you're shooting in Dallas, the maximum is zero. But if you're set in a small town outside of Amarillo, you can shoot for the moon. With a Colt revolver. It can be a little bit confusing. Here's a handy graph just to help you out. I got an interesting question from Malcolm Framji asking me to share my thoughts on Magic Mike. What was interesting about it was that just a few days later, Ashley McCutcheon asked me the same thing. What are your thoughts on Magic Mike? Now, why is this interesting? It's because in about a week, Ashley McCutcheon is going to be Ashley Framgy. So... Congratulations! Alright! But back to your question on Magic Mike, I mean... I don't know, whatever. I mean, Channing Tatum is... He's a good looking guy. I mean, I get it. I get it, you know, he's got the muscles, and he's got the oil when he's geared up, and I, what, I, what, it's fine. So, so maybe I could see, because I'm not like that, but maybe I could see a girl would want, you know, his junk, the, the dancing, and the, I get it, I get it. I mean, it's not my thing, but I mean, beautiful muscles displayed in the face and the jawline, and you know, I mean, and those eyes just... And, and I could see, I could see, I mean, maybe you could fantasize of this guy, like, like, like being on, you know, on you and, and making you just call his name and, and grabbing your hair and making you say things that you'd never, ever... Channing! Channing! Well, like I said, it's, it's not my thing. <coughs> oh, God.
Yeah, I don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs>